Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to episode eight of the Trinity with Dangor. Dangor. Who is Dangor then? Is it who which one of us gets to be Dangor? No, he's no Dan, Dangor is like no one's him. He's just yeah, he's himself, he's in it. He's out of it. Just, it's yeah, like you know when Dangor. sometimes you listen to like a radio show and they go, This is so and so presented by and they got the sponsor. It's presented by Dangor. Hey, yeah, Trinity <laughs> presented by Dangor. Mm. I always said this morning, like, if we ever come across him or whatever, can we get him to just do like a sound by like, you're listening to the Trinity with Dan Gore, even though he's not on it. Yeah. Just, Hi, I'm just... Dan Gore. This is the Trinity. You know, yeah, the Trinity. oh, that's it. <laughs> you know what, Tor? That's what I'm going to be working. That's my. I'm sure again. he's going to come back from Port Vale off loan sure. and he's going to be on the tour. And then we can just, I'll oh, just put the little microphone, get the phone, put it on voice yeah, memo. Yeah, just yeah, record yeah, this, yeah. please. <laughs> if yeah, we've done yeah, that, yeah. that would get A star for tour. If we do that, if we can get that sound by it. Before I think that girl probably never speak like that. No, <laughs> but it is episode eight, man. Um, big up to KG, he's a little bit under the weather today, but he's I'm coming mashed up. I'm pretending. Yeah. It's all good, what are you I... saying? Yeah, like, like, how are you? Like, what's are you good? Like, I, yeah, listen, not good, I but... I got this, I, like, I felt like, you know, the kids they go to school and then they could just get all the bugs and stuff in it. I don't know Bring what it they can, but yeah, my wife is down and out, she's finished. No, She's down. No, I'm spreading like, through the house. One of those oh, ones. Spreading through the house, and my daughter still expects activities. So I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Why do they do that? It's just no Bro, form of. Yeah, yeah. They're like both parents so, are out. Like both parents are down. So she has to understand that there's gonna be these are like I'm gonna give Berbatov um level um what do you call it energy in the house yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I saw I because I went to go onto KG's channel earlier today, and oh, I saw um the last stream you did or whatever and it was it was like a sort of a prequel to today because yeah, 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 he starts yeah. the show and he goes i'm not feeling too great today and then i got the phone i got a phone call from him like an hour later i'm oh, sorry i missed your call i went it's got worse <laughs> it's got worse no i tried to get up this morning and do a pre-record and i was like that's not happening it's like yeah it's not happening now so then after when i spoke to um i, I was looking forward to the trinity because i needed to be a part of the discussion something has been getting on um, Flex has been at all time high. Owen has been weird. Owen has sounded very weird this week. Um, it's been funny, but Owen is just what Owen's saying is things that he wouldn't like people to say about our manager. I'm not saying, and I don't want Southgate, but we I finally realized Owen finally has a, an agenda. He's human, he's one of us. See, yeah. this well, they said it about the Donny van der Beek thing, didn't they? They did that, but so that was like more okay. Oh, he was he right. The Donny van der Beek yeah, one. he was right. That's right. what I'm saying. But this right. one, he, and I feel what Owen's. Whoa, whoa, to whoa, do, whoa, 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 whoa! Are you saying but... that I'm not right with this? Is that what? No, we're no, saying? that's what was. No, that's what I was going to say. You're well, trying to wrap up the criticism in like we want Southgate to come to the to the club. We don't. But in the defense of that, I feel like you you went oh like I never want to defend Southgate. I just want this to be yeah, for the record exactly. as well. But you are exactly. doing flex. You are. Very, I'm like the person in the middle, but it's just as Owen said something that yeah. pricked my ears this week. Okay. He said, "He said if England win, he's gonna break down the how." And I thought that's taking a fist because he wouldn't allow that with you wouldn't allow that with Ten Hag. If Ten Hag, when we me and you do this all the time, we always cuss Flex for saying, "Flex, why are you on how the win? We won. Get over it. Let's move." Like. We move, but if he does something that hasn't been done since '66, yeah, and brings home, you can't talk to me about why. There's no why in it. Like that's mad what you're doing. I think this week, okay, I am sandwiched between two massive hypocrites. Is what I'm sandwiched between this week. First of all, Flex yes. said this morning at the end of the show, he said, "When we bring this up, don't get defensive. Don't get all defensive." I went, "Whoa, whoa, whoa." Defensive. Oh. I went. This is the same yeah. guy. If he misses something at FIFA, he goes. I'm going to shut down the channel. I said, yes. we're going to. So let's let's get defensive. Then I'm saying, don't be like this, me. Earlier this week. Earlier this week, I get a phone call from KG going. You sound like you've got an agenda. I went. Sorry, am I talking to Kevin Gary? I went. <laughs> he's giving me phone calls talking about agendas. I couldn't <laughs> believe this, and I'm still missing the point. Right? There's a lot where, of deflection here already. This is there's what, this not is a lot of deflection was. going he's just, on. He's just I speaking like, about me and you rather than himself. And this is my point. But carry on. Carry on. Actually, my point. Oh yes, I carry on after he's interrupted me. It's totally fine. What he can do? <laughs> very pass passive aggressive. What he can do? <laughs> what he can do? Right. This is what I also don't get is how you're missing the point as well. I don't think it's a novel concept that if Gareth Southgate won the Euros. 
I would give him credit in the sense of if anyone wins a match or a competition, like they would get credit. But the circumstances and the context of how you won it, the journey oh. to how you win it, oh. gives you either extra credit or no. a bit less credit. That's no. not a novel concept. No. That's no. not. And CKG, and my thing was that there is no. under no circumstances that Gareth Southgate it's... could receive any less credit. Less. Not... The word less. If he does that, and, and my argument wasn't even, why are you saying this? He could actually be good for Man United or there's nothing to do with that. And what people were like convoluting was like, oh, you're defending him, flex your description. You are, no, you are I, defending him. I, I, I'm defending him in the context of if he wins the Euros for England and what it means for England. Nothing to do with Man United. I don't want that was one thing you defended him on. You defended him on some other things as well. You, you defended. Just, he you also said KG. He also, he also said he was like, yeah, but he's got further than any manager since '66. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, so yeah. He has so, a fun goal. So you can you can't give him credit for being the best loser. No, 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 no. no. But what I was giving him credit for in terms of like. The, we've had big managers and we've had the whole golden generation that have failed. They've won nothing. So the fact that he's got furthest with with furthest a new generation. Is, no, 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 no. Hear me out. The fact that the fact that he's got furthest should stand for something if he wins. If he gets over the line, which is something that our whole Rio Ferdinand, Rooney, Scholes, Lampard, Gerard, Campbell, Ashley Cole, Gary uh, Gary Southgate, Gary Neville. All of them, all of them, Michael Owen in his prime, like Shearer, like, come on. Andy Cole couldn't even get a game. So let's not do the whole thing of that. If he wins, we're going to look for, well, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, yeah, I, like, yeah. I'm, 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 nah. I'm not, I'm not, that's, I'm not saying that. When, it felt like you were doing that, Owen. Well, well, like that's what it felt that. like, but it was not what I was because saying. Because you don't like him, because it felt to me like yes. because you don't, don't like don't, him. Don't, and It's not like I don't like Gareth Southgate. I've never met him. Because you don't like him as a coach. Exactly. you don't like him as a coach. And you don't want him at Man United, which I agree yeah. with. It felt like you were still going to try try to take points off him for doing something that has not been done since Sir Alf Ramsey and Bobby but that's, Moore. But that's not the case. That, and that's that is not I, the case. And at I want to say, I I say like. as a listener, that's what it sounded like. It sounded okay. like they'd win it in 60. They haven't won it since 66. And then you said the style, the management, if he did something, it's like, mate, there's no management. Beers are flowing, but it's football's come home. That's the that's the that's the bottom line of it. There's no real, there's there's yeah. no there's no way to look at it because England are the perennial letdowns. They of they've let us down over and over again. Now we don't even believe that they can do anything in any tournament. Now Gareth Southgate, what he has done has um, made us like believe again. But then he's not made me believe. He's not made me believe enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, don't, I don't thing. believe at all. I mean, I so you don't believe we sense... can win the Euros. Uh, I believe in that. Yeah, I believe in the team. I believe, of course, I believe in the team. We've got See, a great squad of players. It's, not, it's because we've got good players. It's nothing to do with Southgate. Gareth, oh, Southgate. Yeah. Gareth Southgate. Southgate. And the thing I'm is with him, agenda, yeah. Actually. And the thing is with Gareth Southgate, yeah. Oh, I don't call it an agenda flex because you know I've come prepared for today's episode. Ooh. I've done yeah. my research. Okay. Yeah. Let's go I knew you through. Would. I knew you would. Let's, fine. let's go through, would. okay, my oh. issues with Gareth Southgate and why he shouldn't be the England manager, let alone the Manchester United manager, right? Let's, yeah. let's, let's get this. Let's hope he doesn't win the Euros after this, by the way. Carry on. Well, let's hope he does. I hope England. Do win the Euros, and then he you just said he around. shouldn't even be the manager. He, he shouldn't, shouldn't be there. Wait, wait, can I, we think... can we just state our no, statements? What does that mean? Anything? We need statements that we need statements to be very clear. I am yeah. saying for the record, yeah. I do not want Gareth Southgate anywhere near Man United. Agreed. Are Agreed. we all in agreement? We're yes. all in agreement. Okay. What's getting left at me and you, KG? More so me. No, 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 no. It's not been that me at all. Okay. That's what well, you. Well, 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 well. If you don't say it, well, what's been labelled at me is that. Oh, you're a disgrace. Why are you defending him? Okay. That's what's but you are defending him. him. You have been defending him. In the context him. of England. You've yes, been defending you've been defending his record as England manager. All right, True? cool. Now, yeah. now this is where yeah. I'm willing to listen and hear. And then the, my other statement I want to make, just so we we know where we're getting what this argument is. I think Owen is being just a I think there's a there's, there's a sign of agenda with the way Owen talks about what if he won it. What he would say. That's where I and that's okay. where that was my main gripe. And, and I will that put and I will, and I will be and I will be honest and say, because maybe it's been misinterpreted, that of course, if England win the Euros, of course Gareth Southgate would get credit for that. He's the England manager. Yes. He would get a knighthood from he would yes. he would. Everyone but, would, okay. Well, no, but I still don't think he's a good coach. And that, that's not changed point. anything. And, look at it, and yeah, and look at his tenure as the England yes. manager, right? Okay, first of all, what did he do to get that job? He worked yeah. for the FA, all right? So, and his only prior experience as a manager was with Middlesbrough. 
He was there for a year, two years. He got relegated from the Premier League. If you're going to just look at his England time, okay, every time we've come up against a good team with a good coach, maybe, we have lost. Croatia, semi-final, we lost. France, quarter-final of the World Cup, we lost. In that same World Cup against Belgium, a good team, we lost. Twice. When we faced the Netherlands, right, in the Nations League, semi-final, we lost. Let's take a look at the Italy game, Euro 2020, at Wembley. A poor Italy side. They haven't qualified for the World Cup before or after. If you look at the stats of that match, Flex, they're yep. horrific. Horrific. Agreed. At home, 34% possession. <laughs> in 120 minutes of football, we had six shots in total. Six. Only two on target. At home. At Wembley. Um, against a poor Italy side with ageing defenders. What happened in that match is a good coach in Roberto Mancini, i.e. a coach that has won something, the Premier League, Serie A, he completely outdid him. Why? Because Gareth Southgate, he's not a good coach. The same thing happened twice in clutch games. Croatia, five minutes in, Trippier, free kick scores. What happened in that match? Two shots on target in 120 minutes. That one, it was 11 shots in total the whole game. The Italy one, as I mentioned, Shaw scores two minutes in. What happens after that? It's just two shots on target. Six That's shots in 120 yeah. minutes. And then people like to point out with the whole beating good team side, we beat Germany. That is a poor Germany side in the Euros. They haven't got out the group in the last two World Cups. Let's not pretend that's a good Germany side. And then people want to talk about his World Cup record. Oh, his World Cup record's really good. Is it? Look at the teams he's beaten at the World Cup. Tunisia, last minute goal. That run to the semi-final included beating Panama, Colombia, not in regulation time, on penalties, Sweden, once went up against good side, Croatia, we lost. That is the easiest run to a possible World Cup final you will find. Next World Cup, who did we beat? Iran, Wales, Senegal, out to France. Did I mention in those two runs as well, we drew of the USA, USA, no, no, at the World Cup. We drew of Scotland at the Euros as well. Yeah, everyone was, everyone was people, Southgate out then as well. People forget as well, prior to the last World Cup, we were in the Nations League. We didn't win a game throughout the entirety of that tournament. Six games in a row. We yeah, did we not win. Smashed. We Where lost we against Hungary. Nil? We lost Ooh. against Hungary 1-0. Yeah. We drew against Germany 1-1. We drew against Italy 0-0. We lost 4-0 against Hungary at home. It was at Molyneux, but still, it was at home. We lost against Italy 1-0. We drew 3-3 against Germany. And more stats to back this up to, Flex. England, yeah, England have won just seven of their 22 matches against the current world top 10. That's a win percentage of 32%. And you know what's really making me sick with all of this? Is I'm seeing the media just ignore this. Ignore it all. I was going to watch this morning, stick to football, overlap. It's a great podcast. Within like the first 10, 15 seconds, I see Ian Wright say, well, Gareth Southgate, he's got the stature of a Manchester United manager. What stature? What yeah, that's, stature are we looking shit. at? He's gone crack. He's gone and, crack. In, and in the same way, the media are looking to cut down Eric Ten Hag for every little thing. They're there bending over backwards, praising every little thing that Gareth Southgate does. And what, ba what baffles me is the media. Nobody in the media raises the question of, what, well, what's he actually done? Particularly in club football. What has he won? International football is totally different. To club football, and this is why you can't trust the media. Can I, can I say something? I want to flip up all my opinions. Owen has sold that to me. I'm now again. I've joined the agenda. I don't care. And that's no, why. And that's, that's, that's why. That's why I say. And that's why I say. Unless you change, unless you help me change my opinion, flex because but no, but it still stays the same. No, no, no. It's still, and, and, right, that's, and, and that's no, no, why. No, and that's no, why I say. And that's why I say. Of course, he would get credit. What, yes. but that's, of course, he would get credit if he won the Euros. But at the same time, there is a sort of scale of how much credit you get, depending on any victory. An example would be Claudio Ranieri, right? Wins the yes. Premier League. He gets yes. credit for winning the Premier League. But do you get people years after the fact going, oh, it's a Ranieri masterclass? What jobs has he done since then that are big jobs? Why? Which ones? No, but it goes. No one said to him, "How did you win it? How did they do it?" Leicester, what? Leicester won. won he's it. won more than Gareth Southgate as well. Exactly. Well, big but what I'm saying why's, is, why's Claudio nobody Ranieri got no one got the pretendings of how he won it. If you if you get over the line and do something that hasn't been done since God knows when, yeah, th th your credits in the back. That's it. Yeah, of course, of course, you get praise, but but yeah. there is but there is an acknowledgement when it comes to that of 
yeah, but big jobs. I mean, that was Leicester's season. You know, the groundwork was laid the season prior as well. Same with like the Portugal manager. Is the Portugal manager now going on to get big jobs when because he, he won the Euros in 2016 with a poor Portugal squad? No, because there's a general acknowledgement of, well, it's international football and sometimes these things kind of happen. You know, Cristiano Ronaldo is running up and down the touchline. That's how it works. Jose Mourinho. Mourinho is the best example, I think, of this in terms of how you can get extra credit. Mourinho won the Champions League in 2010 with Inter Milan. First time they'd done it in years. Might have been the first time they'd ever done it. I forget. Right? And he gets credit for that, obviously. But what gives him even more credit? They go... I tell you what, they went away to the new Camp semi-final, Barcelona, one of the greatest teams of all time. And he did them. He got through. You get extra points. You get extra credit for that. So that's you know my what? point with Southgate. Of course, he would get credit if he won the Euros, but you can't ignore sort of the context that would go into it. There's expectation that he should win or they should get far. If he does it, you would say well, it's a mental hurdle. He got over the line. Super credit to him. But in the same way that people criticise him, for losing the final against Italy, it's because that's the final we should have won at home with players, and he didn't do it tactically. Had he done it tactically, and it was a masterclass, we got one up and we defended the whole game, we won it, he would get extra credit for that because they'd say, yeah, it worked. But when it comes think, to clutch, I big think, moments, he can't think, do it. Okay, I think, well, honestly, that because of England, yeah, and the PR machine that we have, obviously, Maguire, everything, yeah, if he does anything, as soon as Lee England do anything of note, to just win anything, it will be lauded as one of the greatest fates you've ever seen in this world because they wouldn't break it down. They wouldn't say, well, he did it because of this, that, and the other. They just accept it. Even if we won them with that run that you said, Panama, Senegal, Colombia and stuff, had we won the World Cup, it none of that matters. You know, so there is that thing. But then when you do break down this record, and this is the thing, this is what I haven't liked. Even if we put a Man United-centric spin on this thing, yeah, he's not good enough. He's just not, he is not good enough. Like when people say um, he bought in Kobe, is he preparing Kobe to be his man? No, he cannot be the Man United manager under any circumstances at all. Like there's not none in this world. You're talking about someone that doesn't have players consistently. There's international football is totally different to club football. All they want to do is they want to get their guy in because he'll be perfect for the media. They, yes, they love him now. As soon as he got, let, let's say, imagine Ineos were crazy enough to give him the job. As soon as it goes bad, you're going to hear everything. Never won anything. Relegate. You're going to hear things you never even knew they thought about him. So I don't trust these lot. They, they can sling their hook because you're going to bring this man to big Man United. For what reason? Why is he getting that job? Because he's he's brought the good feelings back. Oli brought the good feelings back. What's the difference between him and Oli for feelings? Yeah. yeah. It was, it was a piece. There is was no a, difference. It was a piece that um, Melissa Reddy did for Sky Sports today. Yeah. I can actually get the quotes up on the screen right now. And um, it was first of all saying that some feel Ten Hag is actually being undercut uh, by all of this speculation. And there is certain division in some quarters over the suitability of Southgate for the position. And this is why I was so taken aback, because this is the first time I've actually seen the media talk about this. They said, uh, she said, the greatest concern is how someone who hasn't been involved in the club game for 15 years, he was fired from Middlesbrough after overseeing their relegation from the Premier League in 2008, 2009, can walk into the biggest job when he's not even in the conversation for others. This is what one source said to her. She said, quote, um, would any other top club be looking at him for the summer? Would Liverpool hire him, Bayern Munich? So why would Manchester United? Absolutely. And, and that's, that's, and, and and that's, that's why he can never come near our football club. The, every every single thing of why Southgate should not be England, uh, should not be Man United manager. It's there for us all to see. thousand percent. He can't be that. If we just rewind... So all of those stats and all of those figures and all of the things that happened in England, absolutely, absolutely. Because also what we can do is look at what England have done and what they've always done, which is quarterfinals and round of 16. If we go back to 98 quarterfinals against Brazil, 2006 World Cup, quarterfinals against Portugal, 2010 South Africa, Germany, round of 16, uh, finished bottom of the group in Brazil, awful. To, uh, 2018, of course, we got to the, that famous semi-final and we saw what happened in the last World Cup in the quarters. In the Euros, same thing. Group stage, finished bottom, 88. Finished bottom, uh, 80, 92 after that. Semi-finals against Germany, 96. Finished uh, uh, third in the group 
in 2000. Portugal quarterfinals, the famous Rooney and Ronaldo uh, situation. 2008, McLaren, umbrella at Wembley, didn't even qualify. Quarterfinals against Italy in 2012. Uh, round of 16 against Iceland. Remember that? I remember when Sturridge scored and we thought, um, you know what I mean? There's something here. Went out. Do you know what I'm saying? So let's not act like England haven't been bottling for years with the golden, golden, golden generations with the best players to have ever played for England. With Gascoigne, with Hoddle, with Rooney. We're, we're talking about heroes of the game. So the bottling thing that England have had has been there way before the, the incomprehensible Gareth Southgate came. So when I say that, like, getting further in, in, in competitions matters, right? I, of course, when we got there, he lost. Absolutely. Do not, do not disagree with that. But the context of just saying, like, he's just as much a bottler as, what, when we had Sven, when we had Capello, when we had Hoddle, when we had Venables, when we had Bobby, um, what's his name? Um, God but then you're missing something. Um, you're missing a yeah. no, 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 no. So what, no, no, no. So what I'm saying is he, he can't get plaudits for not winning. But the context of, like, England have been bottling since 66. So let's not act like the bottling thing's new. My thing is, my only, hang on, let me land. My only thing is, is if he won. That was my, in that show, my, my, because I even tweeted this because in anticipation of the Euros, because I'm excited for this England team because of the players we got, because of the, the, the form that they're in, because it is irresistible. What, I'm not in this camp of, some people are going too far, which is the problem with England fans is, that's if we don't, if, 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 we, if we don't, if we don't, if we don't win that, if we don't win this Euros, it's, it, 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 it's, you're a disgrace. Have you seen France's team? Stat. That's have you why, seen, have you seen Portugal's team? Hundred percent. So here's so here's my thing. If he finds a way to win, right, where it isn't his fault that France went out to Portugal because we was on the favourite side of the draw, you know, in a home tournament where Germany, okay, we played them in the Euros in the World Cup last time. Sorry, in the Euros last time, and it's a shit version of Germany. They've yeah. now got they've now got a manager that a lot of people at Man United wouldn't mind in in Nagelsmann, a good manager. And they're going through a transition and they're on home soil. They're on home soil. So you have to say, listen, if England have to, if anyone has to play Germany at the Allianz Arena or the Olympic Stadium in, in Munich, yeah, in the semi final, it's different. It, 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 we get that. It's different. We didn't make it count, like Owen said, because Southgate fucked it up. There's no, there's no two ways about it. When we went 1 0 down, he shut the bed. And the stats suggest that. My only argument throughout this whole thing has not been that Gareth Southgate is good enough for Manchester United. My only argument has not been that Gareth Southgate, you know, deserves to be lauded as England manager. No, 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 no. My initial situation, which we seem to have deviated. I don't know how we've deviated from the original thing here. My situation was I said to Owen, so if he won, if he did something since 1966 that no yes. one's done. My feeling from Owen in that moment was a bit... But that's what it is. You just, that's a, you just but it's just a feeling. Down, like, I but don't it's just know. A and then, that's not and what then I, I felt, said. And then I felt like, I said. and then, oh, and then he said, oh, and, then, and then, and then he was. I felt like he was attacking me. He was swearing. He seemed agitated. He seemed riled up. And I've seen Owen do this to many a people. And we have to say this though. Many we have people. to say this though. You, you do have, you do have, ta like, there's an annoyance tax with you. You know when you're doing it. You know when you're taking liberties. Asking questions you know on the show. You're, no, okay. no, no, it's not asking right. questions on the show. Don't get it's, defensive flex. It's, okay. it's when you start doing that flex thing, you like and you decide this is what I'm doing for the next 15 to 20. And I've been on the receiving end of these silly, like they seem like great, lovely performances, but you're just being a prick. That's the and best also, way to, and that's also the best way yeah, it must oh, be okay. stressed because he did it because he did it just then. He is ignoring what I'm saying as well. And so I'm not, in I'm his not, mind, no, in his mind. No, I acknowledge everything you said. He's can, I, can, I, can I ask one question? So am I, mind, am I being a prick? So am I being a prick? To, what do you call it? Can I get back to the... And you can have your... Go listen, on. so what Owen did that was wrong is Owen... And he cleared up today. Owen said, look, it didn't mean that. I never meant that. That's not the point I was getting at. You know, with the whole breaking it down. Which yeah, is clear enough. That's, that's clarity. That's time. clarity. Because that's where I said, that's where, that's where the agenda was. I stand with Owen saying, this guy's not good enough. But then Flex... Agreed. You, you do have this thing here yeah, when you decide, I'm just going to be a prick right now. Yeah, and you know it. Because there's a little smile. There's a little thing that you're doing. and you start, Now you're like, you're just not giving this thing up. 
you remember well, there's a twist there's a twist isn't there yes. like there's a twist yes. there's a there's a twist of the words there's a twist of it because you mentioned there about yeah. him getting credit if he won it my yeah. point was of course he would get credit for it but you mentioned those teams as for the same reason we can't be over sort of england are going to win the euros if we win the euros if we don't win the euros he's a disgrace in the same way that if we won the euros by beating portugal or france or germany or a combination of that along the way Gareth Southgate would get more credit for that than just winning it with an easy run. So would it, would it also would. prove would it would it prove everybody wrong as well? Then would it prove yeah, would it prove course, that actually he's not it. a bottle job? And because has it has it been overlooked that actually um, he's getting over good. The, the, the get no. What I'm saying is that's what I'm saying. So and when he has, he's lost. Would it prove that the the journey of getting over the line? I don't think you need the patience. Things. What you lot need to realize is I don't think it's just him that made the difference. When we went into the tournament, the first tournament with Gareth Southgate, a lot of us were disillusioned with England and the media stopped doing that stupid thing that they'd done in many in times before when they just believed they can win. We no, kind of now went, we should believe with the players we got we should that, believe. We're, now we're getting, now we're doing a stupid thing now that we've we've done again. And now we're gonna get in I believe we're in more trouble now because I think humility slapped it um slapped the England team in the face and it's good kind of using England and Man United as a good base and barometer for where things are. You you were once a great side, this, that, and the other, but you're not great anymore. Now you've got to, now you've got to build this. You know when people say, we're Man United, we should be playing us this way. We're Man United, we should be doing this. England, where we find the, the, the fan feeling when we get into games, you know when we say when we play Liverpool and all these other teams, we say, we should be doing this, we're Man United. We can't, though. <laughs> There's not like, and now there's this, there's this beyond expectation. People are going into this game saying England are going to win this competition. How? What have you son? What have you seen to say England are favourites to win this competition? Yes, they have some great players, but I'm not going to say this team is more talented than a team yesteryear. It's not. There's no way. So we we basically we're doing it again. And and the reason why I think when we played um Italy, remember all that stuff is coming home. And they stated they said, listen, all them songs, everything you were doing, we knew we have to beat you guys. We knew that like no matter what happens in this game, we're gonna find the extra piece because you guys are annoying. You guys walk around with this thing like some some feeling of we can win any game. We're better than anyone. No, mate, it happens on the grass. It, that that's where it's really that's where it really happens. So fans need to humble themselves in their attitude to this and say, let's see how far we can go. Because the pressure is what's killed them in the past and made them not take shots. Remember when Rooney was cussing the fans because they booed him or something? Yeah, getting booed yeah. by your own fans yeah. and all this other. Yeah. We have to just get in the right. The, the, the media have to be right. The team. Well, this has is to the be thing right. of England. This is this is why I'm saying that that's not all on Gareth South. That's my point. My point is is that England have been serial bottlers for our whole gen our whole lifetime. Us sitting yeah. on this pod, most people listening at home, unless you yeah. were born before '66 or you were there to see it, England oh. have been bottle jobs. Yeah, that's that's what we are. When we've had great players, when we've had the golden generation, and now we've got a. Let's be honest. Now we have a new golden generation. Maybe not ones that will go down as better than Lampard, Skulls, Beckham, Gerrard, you know, all, all that Rooney, Shearer thing. But we've got a new set of players that are in an amazing patch of form. A lot of the the main players are really, really doing it. What Jude Bellingham's doing, he's one of the best midfielders in the world. Foden, he's one of the best attackers in the world right now. Harry Kane, he's one of, if not the best striker in the world. At the back, you've got Kyle Walker. Yeah, he's had a bit off season, but he's he's still Kyle Walker. You've got Treble Stones, winner. yeah, Treble winner. Do you know what I'm saying? You've got you've you've got you've got Saka, one of the best youngsters in in the world right now. You know, you've got players to come in, and, and you've got Declan Rice, one of the best midfielders in the world. So. With that, we still should believe. Uh, look, look, this isn't an England podcast, but we st we we sh we, we should still case. you should still yeah exactly you should still be you should still be able to believe. But like you said, flipping it back to club level, it is one hundred percent different. And Gareth, and that's what I do have to actually have to make clear. Never once throughout this thing have I been thinking. But hold on though, but hold on, maybe he could no. Gareth Southgate can't come Man United. In my opinion, the same way Graham Potter can't come Man United. Would you take it's him if he won the Euros? No, it wouldn't change my mind. Which is, I think also no. as well, and again, this kind of this this, no this does steer it back to United. Um, I think the whole coverage of it, I think, like I said earlier on, I think is actually a disgrace. I think it's awful. I mean, one thing you that think Gareth it's just Southgate has... 
No, I think one thing that Gareth Southgate has done well, and I'll give credit for it, is he has, as KG pointed out earlier on, he's changed the perception of England and the media of him and the England squad because they love him. They love him. But that, to me, is why I find it even more baffling because they love him. But I don't, but I don't see why, because it's based on I guess I guess because of how far we've gotten these competitions. But no one is having this conversation of like Gareth Southgate being linked to Man United. Are we are we crazy? This is nuts, and it's so disrespectful to Eric Ten Hag as well. He just not Liverpool out of the FA Cup, and everyone, and it, this is when the hypocrisy steps in, and this is when the double standard steps in because again that's a massive result. And going into the game, everyone's talking about how United are going to get smashed. We're rubbish. We're terrible. Worst United season ever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Next thing you know, you've not Liverpool out. Manchester United, uh, they're, it's a vi they're a viable contender to get into the Champions League, which that wasn't the case a couple of weeks ago. And the first thing they want to talk about is some guy who's never done anything, particularly at club level, but never done anything in general, is looking to replace him. And, uh, the, and from a media point of view, I just think that absolutely stinks. And I look at Ineos and I look at their link basically is, you know, you've got Dan Ashworth coming in. He's worked with Gareth Southgate in the past and they worked with Southgate as part of this like Ineos sport initiative thing. So, you know, so Dale Brailsford likes him and Sir Jim Ratcliffe likes him. And, and I look at this, the way that this has played out the last couple of weeks. And like I said, one, I think it's really disrespectful to Eric Ten Hag. But I think two as well, I think Ineos and Sir Jim, there was so much adversity to them throughout the whole process of getting involved with United. People wanted Qatar, they wanted a full buyout, they wanted this, they wanted that. They were sold dreams, whether they were true or not, let's pop that to one side. But one thing that he has done, and I think really impressively, Sir Jim, and since he's been in charge, is like he's built up a lot of credit pretty quickly. Now, obviously, actions speak louder than words. But every time he's done an interview, well, he goes, but every, yeah, exactly. And every time he's done an interview, people have got to tell you what I like that. Calling him the enemy. He's put the task force together to do the stadium. He's put money into the club. It was meant to be going to infrastructure. It's paid off debt, but there's more still coming. And, you know, he's having these meetings, best in class, Omar Barada, Dan Ashworth. And everyone's going, this is great. This is, look what he's doing. This is fantastic. These are some of the things that the Qataris promised us as well. And he's doing them already. I just think if you, if you even go or sniff in the direction of Gareth Southgate, all of that goodwill, it's just gone you know, immediately think, same with graham potter by the way we KG, would yeah but we would but we would have to and this is where this is where it becomes difficult like we all agree and i think everybody listening to this podcast right now that if gareth southgate became manchester united manager i i feel sick we'd be, we'd would, be a laughing would, stock it, yeah I'd we'd be, be a laughing stock, stock. Be until would be yeah out. I'll be in your cell. I promise you. I see. We can't do that, man. In your cell. I'm not going to lie to you. I will not lie. I'll be in your cell because you still have to. You still have to wait to see what happens. I still, still say have to. No, I still you can't say do that. Bro. You can't say. Oh, why Owen, what? In your cell, Owen. In no, your you know. But no. Do you know what I would say to Enios? You know what I'd say? Wake the fuck up. Is what I'd say. <laughs> now nah, I'm in your cell. I, I, I would be if they did that. If they hired. So, Absolutely. What, again, what, say, say, all right, let me let me paint this for you. Let me paint it because we like when we do the Trinity podcast, it's just yeah. fun to do stuff like this. Let yes. me paint this scenario for you, yeah? Right. Awesome. Um, there's an announcement, right? Let me just give you a chronology. Like, yellow ticker on Sky. Go on. Yellow, yellow ticker on Sky. Well, th well this, this happens. Say, say this happens. Breaking news. <laughs> Breaking news in the last couple of minutes. Gareth Southgate is set to become the Manchester United manager, signing a multi-year contract. Ineos have got their man. Eric Ten Hag is set to leave at the end of the season. Oh, hell no. I'd be slapping myself, thinking it's a, thinking it's a nightmare, going, wake the fuck up. <laughs> Eat that fucking shit. Wait. That weren't going to be my thing, though. That weren't going to be the, that weren't going to be it. That weren't going to be it. What's he going to do? How's I was going to get to that bit. What I was going to paint, what I was going to paint is this, KG. Ineos. So it would have been that whole breaking news thing, Sky Sports Yellow Bar. Sergio Ratcliffe announces plan for brand new Old Trafford. It's all signed, sealed. We're getting a new stadium. So that's the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, the transfers. Uh, sorry, uh, Dan Ashworth through, through the door. Through the door, he's in. He's in. Uh, through the door. Um, then um, we trim the squad and do some nice transfers that we like. I mean, now Nevis. Because we've got them. 
manager has to tra- help trim the squad, didn't he? No, no, Eric Ten still there at this point because it's, it's not quite the end. It's not quite. It's not quite the end of the, the window or anything like that. It's near the beginning. It's right in the beginning. Mm. So we get all nice players, sell the players, get good money. You're doing a uh, lot of stuff. You've done a I, lot of stuff. Is this is this your uh, concept? I want to know when you're doing it. It's at the end of the season. When is when is no, all these? Well, you would have found out if you didn't stop me. Okay, uh, cool. So there's there's three things there. New stadium, yeah, yeah. brand new. Ineos, wicked. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna add another one in. All the debt's gone. He's cleared it. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Don't tell me. No, now, no, no. now we're getting no. into. Now right, we're getting okay. into like right, cool. stupid territory. I, I, I thought we could have fight. No one. It's all right. Just I thought you other. were gonna say. I thought we could have fight. No, go on. No. You're just gonna be realistic. Go on. Go I don't want to do it anymore. Oh, let's just delete the channel and 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 get him cagey. This is when he early on he went, "Don't get defensive." Owen, when we bring this up later, yeah. Wait, wait. So I thought, have, I thought we were. I thought we could have fun. KG lives in the world I'm of listening. imagination. I'm, listening. No, and... I'm still waiting for the thing. No, it's I'm lost. It's fine. Just move on. All right, cool. Guess what? All have you seen cleared. Adidas? They brought back the new ball from 2004. Cool. All the cleared. Carry on. Carry Basically, on. I was going to say like, if you do all that stuff, and then he said, get, "Like Southgate's in at the end, would you still be in your out?" But it doesn't matter. No. So. <laughs> No. Now let me go. Let me let me say this to you. I'll ask you another time. It's fine. Wait, hold on. Guess what? Guess what? Um, <laughs> the, the the timing for when he makes that decision about Southgate would be the end of the season. So if he clears the debt, yeah, and builds a new stadium for the start of the next season, Indios in. If he if he was to well, and Southgate's the manager. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If he cleared the dot, yeah, built a new stadium, signed Gareth Southgate, Indios in. Fine. Ineos in. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because I know he's going to... He, he'll be sacked soon. It's one of those things. It'll be Ineos in, Southgate out. On Southgate's first press conference... Well, instant. Will, instant. <laughs> Ineos in, Southgate out. I promise you. I'm not... This is how bad it will be. But real talk, though. Would, would it be Ineos, would it be Ineos out if he just brought him in? Yes. Like, literally. Yes. Really? He's, bad. he's not... He is no... He's what if not, they saw something and then he it was a you all laughed at me thing? And and why have you not seen good. it in... What do you call it? You, you must see it in Ten Hag. What, how has he got more than Ten Hag's got? Yeah. that That's the main point, isn't Maybe it? Maybe the they might see something. They would see that. Well, the, the, the reports were basically saying that it could be a worry about Ten Hag working in that structure, whereas Gareth Southgate would be more than happy to work in that structure. Of course he would. Couple if you got the job in the first place, of course, he'd be happy to work in that structure, he'd be willing to do anything. Same way Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was. Oh, I just think what worries me, Owen, would you be happy to work in that structure? The structure yeah, because I'm just about as qualified as Gareth Southgate is to be Manchester United manager, of course, I'd be happy in it. I've, I've also, I've also <laughs> won nothing at a managerial level, just like Gareth Southgate has. <laughs> so I'd be like, more, more than happy, mate, no problem, no, not no issue at all. <laughs> what, what would worry me though, KG, and this is probably a good scenario to give you. Because, yeah. in fairness, the reporting, whilst the media are like loving it, as KG would say, glazing Glaze. Gareth, South, Gareth Southgate. Like yeah. they do stress, you know, no decision's been made, blah, blah, blah. So I think all of us go, ah, it's just international break. It's international, you know, hogwash. Nothing's really going to happen. Yeah. If, like, if it does come out, like, let's say six weeks' time or whatever, they're like, nah, any else, they're going in a different direction. Do we okay. then have to be worried at that point of like, yes. shit, they're going to do it? They're actually going to do it. I, I, I did, Owen, I think if Ten Hag did go, we've got to be... We'd have he's to on be that extremely. list. He's on that list. No, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not. I, I, I think, I agree with Flex here because my worry yeah. is, I think if Ten Hag were Tim to go, I, I think he is on that list. And that yeah. terrifies me. And you know That's what? And I know, what, I know I've picked me. up him winning the Euros, but hear this one. I'll tell you what, if he wins the Euros, I think that Ineos could be very... No, the FA FA will force him to stay. England well, he can't best force him to. Is what he wants. Contract um, expires in December. Yeah, his contract's and, and not he there. and he might know. He might think, I ain't winning the World Cup. I, I can't believe World it. Cup. No, I could win a World Cup. No, this is what we have to get into. And Owen, you almost you you skirted there when you're talking about this week and the disrespect for Ten Hag because we haven't even spoken about Liverpool or anything like that. Now, guys, what's happened this week is the unexpected for the media. The unexpected for people like Luckhurst and all these other ones, all of these guys, all these journals, yeah, they didn't want us to win. Why? Because it's a harder week sell. They, like it's harder to to push stories and narratives. You know what narratives they had if they went into this week? 
you got Casemiro breakdown. Imagine if we the toxicity of the fans being really upset. Casemiro has to go and get a second opinion in Barcelona because the medical team's rubbish. You got um training methods way too hard. You got Man United um out of the cups, can't win anything this season. You got enough to sell papers for weeks. Then you got it could be sorted after the Brentford game. Is the Brentford game the game where he should lose his job? Because they're not playing for anything this season. Season's over. And what they've unfortunately been able, um, not been able to do is that. And then you would have had, the, again, then you had a Southgate links, which would have been, had a, uh, maybe more value. Because yeah, they'd have been way worse. Out. It would have been, been so oh, much Tenard worse. was doing worse. Like, say we just got slapped by Liverpool into this. Yeah. Oh. It would have been even worse than this. Yeah, they'd but oh, that's yeah. what I, I do think, at the beginning, I'm not going to lie. I thought, oh, just an international break, man. He's not always talking shit. But the way, but then when I think about it, it is weird because it's like we're back in the early stages of Ineos. We're behind some of the things that Shijin Rax is saying, and we're saying we're on board, we're on board, we're on board. Wow, this is refreshing. But I just look at what their strategy could be, and I'm like, I do think after the Liverpool game, I said this in the Fletch and KG show, I was like, bro, I shouldn't really change it after one game, but I'm, I'm not going to lie, KG. I, I feel like especially if we could finish strongly, there's enough there, man. But it's not Get just that one back. game. Like, That's it, the key thing. Some no. people say that because like, you did your Flex's view and I saw a lot of the comments were going, I can't believe you've changed your opinion off based off one game. No. And I thought it's that the was the reason unfair. why I was 50% and, and never I, yeah, completely turn hug out. And I feel like that's, a, that's an unfair comment towards you because it must be stressed. Like that kind of, oh, my perspective has changed a little bit. Wasn't just because of the Liverpool game. It was part of it, of course, but it's also what happened in the days leading up to that because in the days leading up to it, the English teams did well in Europe. So the spot opened up to get fifth place. And then our main rivals for said fifth place, both lost. Then we beat Liverpool. Then you look at the table and go, actually, things have changed in just in a, in a week. In and, a week. And, and so so that's not just like, oh, you've changed your mind based off one game. It's kind of like, well, that plays into it, but it's also just, it was a scenario. It's, 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 it's a everything. Scenario. It's every, everything's yeah. opened up, hasn't it? And now... I mean, to be honest, now, if we don't get Champions League at the end of the season, maybe this is quite bold of me to say, but if we don't get Champions League at the end of the season, I think people are looking at it, will look at it and go, man, I completely screwed that up. We, we've got, if you look at the teams above us, Ooh, we have, we've got more momentum. Take, take, we've take, got more take. momentum than then. Spurs, the games that Spurs have coming up, minimum, yeah. they're dropping, I would say, six points. Minimum with the games yeah. they well, maybe not out. the very next game they got Luton at home. No, but in but those, but I mean, those big games, those three, yeah. those three, I don't think they lose every single one, but in the same way, they don't definitely don't win them all. And even if they drew all three, that's three points, they've dropped six points there. And Man United, if they do their job, suddenly I still, think, place. I still think again, there's still a lot of football to be played. That's what we it. do, man. That's, that's what the, we do. It does depend on what we do, and there's a lot of football to be played. I think there's no, um. Definitives. All I want. All I want to say to the fan base, even if it's just a United United View fan base, let's just back these teams. Let's back these two, man. Like yeah, ten games. I want that. Yeah. Like yeah, at yeah. this speed enough, we're gonna back these boys. Do you know what I'm saying? And take that um support to wherever you like, whatever channel you actually do frequent, and just say, you know what, we got ten games. Ten games to do something amazing. We can believe that we can, um, we can, if we do mix it with uh, Man City, like we do get past commentary because we still have to win the commentary game. That's not a rubber. Like that's, even yeah, though it should be, but we have to win that game. Wait, and if you don't win know, that, <laughs> I don't a know if it could be turned out, mate. I don't know. A lot of people are waiting for us to fail against Coventry. Again, there's, you, you can never mix it with, there's some people that want us to fail because they just don't support the club. And you can't be aligned with the people that want us to fail. You know what I mean? Like, regardless of how you feel about the manager, your team's in with a chance of winning silverware. Ten games to go. There's so much to play for. Believe in back the team. There's players yeah. coming back. Leeches on the... Like, there should be good feelings at Man United. But I feel like our good feelings just turn into negative ones so soon. Like, there's, there's almost the... the like, one thing that I can say when we do look at the Arsenals and think of this world is... That season that they had really brought a togetherness in that fan base. And the um was it last really last season? Really when last season. Second. Yeah. Yeah, when he comes second. But okay. there was just a, the, you could feel that there was something, a shift. Usually we'd see with Arsenal fans, there's always been like a fractured relationship well, even with when the they finished fifth. Even the season yeah. before that, actually, even though they bottled it, there were if you ask the Arsenal fans, they were very disappointed, but 
there was a general feeling going into last season, wasn't there? They're like oh, Arsenal. They they were good towards the end of last season. You can see that thing, and that's what. And that for us, I'm surprised that we didn't have like that first season tax with the manager that had a good season for where we all imagined it to go. So I'm shocked at how we're just very quick. But my thing is, forget about what's happened before. Right now. 10 games to go. Yes, there's new ownership. If they decide that they're going to make a they're going to make a mad decision, they decide it. I hope when Omar Dan and everyone come in, they don't do something as stupid as Gareth Southgate. But we can actually finish the season top 4 with a trophy. That's that's good for a team it, it, apparently in transition, which we are. That's it, like, and then I, it would be nice to come onto the fan, like, into the, you know, when we do the shows and we do the streams on the match and stuff, where there's some level of positivity. And it's not every week, bro. I feel like we say, is this the game where our manager could get sacked? No, every but that's, that's, th th this is why, this is why I ain't going to lie. It felt so liberating. That's why I have been unbearable and all, the, all them platforms with the shades on and all that. Yeah. Because I said right from the start, actually, what I'm, how I'm going to face this Liverpool game is, because people can say, did you really, I've seen people in the street, I've seen people message me, it's been, it's been amazing, yeah? And we didn't even win anything, it's just that game, right? But people say like, did you really think we was going to win? And you know what? I did. But the reason I did is because I went, okay, you know what? You see all this podcast stuff, we have to make content, we've got to look at the past, the last five results, we've got to look at Liverpool just did that against City, we've got to look at, but we were just like that against Everton, two penalties, oh, oh yeah, this, that and the other, we've had a shit season, we ain't got no players. All of the things that we have to dissect to even come on these microphones and do what we do, yeah? I said, you know what? For this game, I'm leaving it all at the doorstep. And I'm just going to be or remember, no, not going to be. I'm going to remember that I'm just a fan first before any of this. And and it was actually, you know what? It was actually very refreshing. And there's going to be people watching the podcast now saying, well, you know, this is the problem with content creators. You you know, DC, you lose yourself or you, you just want the team to do. But no, of course I don't want the team to do bad. But mm. I kind of explain what it's like until you're in it of when you are continually analysing shit yeah. and dealing with, opinions and you know that's that's why we entered this space you can actually end up getting lost a little bit and then it was it wasn't until i went nah do you know what we are going to beat them this is liverpool let's get up for this nah 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 and listen it's just lucky that the players responded and they were on that vibe that day as well and of course football is a crazy game we could go and play uh brentford out of the international break and draw and if we do it's going to feel flat as anything or worse they'll lose it'll feel flat Dead as a door now. If we don't beat Brentford after that high of the international break, it will feel like back to square one again. And it won't even mean that top four's gone if that happens, but it will just feel shit. So what it taught me is that, you're right, KG, is that for the next, until the end of the season, whereby it's out of our hands. What any of us are going to do, they're going to do. Whatever they're going to do, they're going to do. We've backed their decisions so far. We have to trust that they're going to make better ones again. Yeah, and I think that look, I think that's the perfect message to end on. Really, I said it after the the game that um, KG's right, like in the sense of now is not the time for divisiveness, is it? Where, where's that going to get us? The manager's not going to go anywhere to the end of the season anyway. Opportunities have opened up, and we might whilst we're here, whether you like Ten Hag or not, whether you like some of these players or not, they're here to the end of the season, right? What we can do is we can be behind them, we can back them. And we can believe in them because in I, I know that for a lot of the season they haven't given us a lot to believe in. But me and KG were saying it on the match view when we were three two down and when we were two one down, we're going. There's a chance left in this game. There's a chance left in this game, and there yeah. was, and there was. So whilst we've got this opportunity now, might as well stay united. Got to take it, guys. Episode eight, episode eight of the Trinity podcast with Angor. Um, yeah. Let us know um, your thoughts and feelings in the comment boxes below. If you're listening on podcast um, platforms, you need to be on where we at uh, Apple, Apple and Google as well and Spotify. Spotify. So them three, them three, three. main ones. The Link. Trinity, the, the Trinity, the Trinity, the yeah. Trinity. Um, we'll be back again next week, man, for another Trinity presented by Dangor. Uh, Six p.m. every Friday. That's that's what it is. That's what we do. KG, big up to you coming oh, through. Say, you you say you powered. I mean? That's it. Powered by Dangar. Yeah. Powered, powered by Dangar. Powered. 
Yeah. And then that could just that could just take on. If he ever sees it, he's like, I don't power. What is this? Well, <laughs> Why you I, what you do now? Powered by Dangor. Anyway, guys, <laughs> take care. See you on episode nine next week. Powered by Dangor. Peace. <laughs> Peace.